One day one patient came, very poor man. His blood pressure was very high the previous time I had seen him. I had the exam in him, battered him on the back and taken 10 milligrams of propranol. Next time he came, his blood pressure was down. The patient did not take the treatment, but the blood pressure came down. <laughs> like this one year I observed, a lot of people without drugs, blood pressure came down. Tomato, okay. One good tomato, fresh tomato, contains about 25 milligrams of vitamin C. You give one tomato every day to a human being, every day religiously give tomato to a human being. Biopositive, biopositive, biopositive. In five years time, his chance of getting cancer goes down by about 50%. So you say, as you have been doing, what does tomato contain? Vitamin C. I give vitamin C. <coughs> so they gave 500 milligrams of vitamin C for those people. In five years time, their chance of getting cancer went up five times. Do you get this idea? In short, nature provides no need fruit. Not for you to analyze it and find out what chemical it is got and give the chemical to the person. But no need fruit as such because then the fruit, other than the one chemical or two chemicals that you know, there are billions of other chemicals which do a synergistic effect on to make it very effective. So any chemical in a larger dose, any chemical for that matter, Killing. I tell you my own personal experience. In the 60s, when beta blockers, there's a drug called beta blockers, which your vice chancellor will tell you, was first invented by a man called Professor Barrett in France. I had gone to his first meeting in 1962 in Paris, where the man was saying, Look, this is a beta blocker, it will block the beta system. So, hypertension gone, heart disease gone, world will be a happier place, and uh, you know, you don't have to worry. And this is propren law. But if you give me a small side laboratory and a test tube and a, and a Bunsen burner, I can take a methyl group, make another law, proper law, sort of law, a mother law, or whatever law you want. And companies made all laws over the years. Oh, so many laws. Eternal law, proper law, metaphor law, biscuit law, pinta law, and all kinds of laws. And every company sold it. Thousands of people got it. Now we know all these laws have killed a lot of people. Because we have given big doses. I was, when I was in Harvard, we used to give 240 milligrams of propranolol for a patient with high blood pressure. Then I came back to Bangalore, working in a government hospital. One 240 milligram tablet will be bought by the government once in a year. So you have to fit a big, small bit of it. So I used to give 10 milligrams. What a good effect, do you know? The blood pressures came down so beautifully. You give 10 milligrams of propranolol, oil, pat him on the back and say, don't you worry, your blood pressure will come down. Next time he came, Sorry, sir, waking you. Uh, now coming back to our propranolol, oil, what happened was, 10 milligrams did the work. So I used to write there in the case sheet, I only gave this man 10 milligrams, his blood pressure came down. So every patient I used to write like that. If I had seen four patients in a day in Harvard, I used to see 400 patients in Mangalore because our patient load was so big. And we had hardly one hundredth of the number of tablets available in Harvard. <coughs> so what happened was, one day one patient came, very poor man. His blood pressure was very high the previous time I had seen him, I had the exam in him, you know, him on the back and written 10 milligrams of propran law. Next time he came, his blood pressure was down. So I said, hey, beautiful. I asked him, you are a very good man. You are very faithful. Take my drug. He said, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. And I again wrote to him and wrote to him. When going, I saw a little bit of his mouth coming out like that. So I called him back. He said, why? why? What happened? And no sir, you wrote yes. But when I went to the pharmacy, they said there is no stock for the next six months because budget comes only in March. It is over in April. And then from April onwards till next March, there is no drug. He said, is it true? Yes. Then I went to the district surgeon. He, found, he said, yes, we don't have the budget. What to do? So I wrote, the patient did not take the treatment, but the blood pressure came down. <laughs> <laughs> like this one year I observed, a lot of people without drugs, blood pressure came down. <laughs> So I wanted a new study which is called Intermittent Treatment of Hypertension Crossover Trial. This was unheard of those days. What I did was, I bought myself some propranolol from the market, cheap propranolol. 
and then some diuretic from the market. And we had two outpatient departments, Monday and Thursday. So I used to give one tablet of that on Monday, not give it and send him, put it in his mouth, tell the nurse to put some water and see that he swallows and look at his mouth very carefully that the tablet is not in the mouth. Sometimes they can keep it here and then sugar swallow and show you the ah, nothing. All that we did. <coughs> then check their blood pressures. On Thursday when they came, first thing was blood pressure check because you can say, oh, he didn't take the he took the medicine on Monday. <coughs> and the blood pressure come continued to same as they tell uh, the other group, I gave them every day, same treatment. One group, Monday, Thursday, one group every day. At the end of six months, I crossed them over. The alternate group came to daily group, daily group came to alternate group. So that you are not comparing different human beings, you are comparing the same human being. This is called a crossover study. This is the best study that you can do. At the end of the day, both are wrong, same. So I published this data in London. I went for a meeting. The abuses I had was something, you know, phenomenal. 1972, I was very young. I also had a little hot blood, but you can't have hot blood in London. So they said, you're a bloody fool, you should be jail, unethical, unscientific, uncouth. I know all kinds of uh, adjectives that they knew. I don't know that many adjectives in English, but number one, number one, it's always a problem. <laughs> if I want, I can really use the best epithets and, uh, and scold them. All that happened. This was done by a man called Colin Dowdry. He was a big man. You know, Colin Dowdry was the professor of clinical pharmacology in the Hammersmith Hospital. Such a big man. I was a puny little fellow from a village. So I kept quiet, swallowed all that and came back. There was one professor of pharmacology in Royal College in Ireland. His name was Kevin O'Malley. O'Malley. O'Malley in Irish is son of Mary. O apostrophe Mary, son of Mary. O'Malley wrote to me, look, I have observed something very interesting. It may be interesting. I used to give a drug called hydralazine, whose half-life is about we ask. That means you have to give three doses every day to the patient. We used to give three doses of hydralazine for pregnant women, etc. to bring the blood pressure down. He gave one dose of hydralazine to a rat, hypertensive rat. And when the pressure came down, he didn't give hydralazine for, he had continued, continued, continued for 150 hours. 150 hours. How many days? 24, 24, 24, 4. 24, 24, 24, 4. Maybe about two weeks. Then the blood pressure started going up. He gave another dose. So he said, I have known this happening without pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics, blood levels, and blah, 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 whatever we teach students in the pharmacology class. All that is nonsense. So I picked up Kevin O'Malley's paper, put my paper together, and rewrote another paper. By this time, the Western world realized there's some truth in it. And there is a man called Michael Aldaman, who is professor of hypertension in New York University. He wrote an editor in the American Journal of Hypertension 10 years later that probably intermittent treatment, step-down treatment will be the future thing. 1993, I wrote a book on hypertension where I mentioned all these things. And now I read the book, book looks very, very new because all the modern drugs that came after that have killed more people. And the latest Al-Hart study, Al-Hart study is the largest study, which studied 64,000 patients showed that most comma, if not all comma, anti-blood pressure drugs have killed more people than they saved, except Diuretics. This is what I wrote in 1993. Same sentence is there in my book. Now we have to go for a small dose. This four message is a science you have to remember. So 